All right, so doing a little video today about what I've been doing the last three days. Today's day three, full day of this treatment diet that I've decided to embark on after considering it for a while. And then I just kept hearing anecdotally story after story of people having profound recoveries from everything from osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, autoimmune conditions, people resolving their depression, even Lyme disease, amongst others. So, I know whenever you hear all those claims and everything, at least when I do, it's, it sounds too good to be true. Nothing's a, you know, a cover-all. But, I decided, I've, I, some respected people, some doctors that I follow in social media and everything are doing this. And we don't, I won't beat around the bush. It is an all meat diet. So in these two containers, I have some meat that I prepared earlier that I'll heat up because what I've learned through this diet, you need to have your food on, on the ready and be prepared because it's not like when you're just starving or hungry sometime, which I haven't been starving yet, that you can just go to the store, you can pop into the fridge and grab what you want. This has been a real experience uh, starting on what they call the carnivore diet. There's many different levels of it. For those who are trying to treat an illness or illnesses, and really trying to eliminate some inflammatory foods possibly, it is really restricted. So it goes right down to meat, and that can include for some fish, and for some they, they include eggs, but a lot of people have an allergy to eggs. But this is it, you have some salt, some meat, some, you know, I use beef tallow, you know, animal fat, and water. So I've started this. I'm going to kind of do my own method, but I'm going to try to do it as much or as close to what people who are having success doing it are doing. So they are really taking most things away. I haven't decided what supplements and everything else that I'll drop yet, but so far three days in, I will say... I haven't had any profound uh, symptoms that I thought I would have as far as my body adapting to, you know, getting fat adapted is what they call it. We'll see. I'm, I'm anticipating that it's not going to just be smooth sailing. I have been on a high fat diet for a long time, but I haven't really dipped into ketosis, I don't believe, during maybe at points I have. But especially leading up to this diet, I kind of went off, I wouldn't say go off the rails, but I had some treats, I had some things that I knew I'd be giving up for a long, long time to say goodbye. So I expected to have some negative results at the beginning and they might be coming down the road, but so far I've had relatively, for me, good energy and I haven't been super hungry. And the first day I had lamb for breakfast. I made some smoke, um, not smoke, some wild caught salmon I had for a late lunch. And then I had some steaks I grilled up for dinner. I kind of ate more that day. I have not eliminated eggs completely since we get such amazing farm fresh eggs here. I probably will be doing that. And I've gone to just the yolks because more people from what I've read and everything are allergic to the whites of eggs. So my goal in this, what, what are my goals? My goal, well, I would hope that I have some profound remission of Lyme disease. My fibromyalgia goes away. I reverse some gut symptoms. But we'll see. I, it could be a horrible diet for me. And believe me, I've been on, I've, what I say is I'm not somebody that feel, this feels natural for exactly. I was a vegan at one point in my life, a raw vegan at one point, pre-illness. 
and I've been a vegetarian before. Uh, I have been delving into the meats for quite some time now. The goats are making noise. And so I'm very comfortable. I don't eat pork. That's just a choice. I haven't eaten it for a long, long time. And um, I pretty much have been having some salmon here and there, some oysters and lamb and some good meats. You know, when I say good meats, I tried to have no antibiotic, grass-fed meats, but my budget and everything where it's gone, it's just not feasible. So I'm going to do the best I can and get the highest quality meats at an affordable price. And I've heard people still having success with this diet going that route. So I'm no expert on this. Don't follow this and try to learn from me on how to do it. I'm just going to give my experience and see how it goes. So... Um, Right now, I mean, what I've been realizing is the second day, I really don't need to eat more than one meal if I eat enough with the fat. But right now, I feel like I need a little bit more of a snack before I go to bed, but not too close to bed. So it's approaching 6.30, I think, and a little late. I'd like to stop eating by about 7, 6.37, so I get a full 16 hours of intermittent fasting. I must add this. So I also read if you've been drinking coffee which i had been and i've been doing the high fat coffee daily for a long time giving up all that you give up plus the coffee the first month might be too much so sign me up i went right in and said okay i don't need to give up coffee i admit it usually i go whole hog into these things but no pun intended don't eat hog but i decided that be gentle on myself continue with the coffee. So I've been having that in the morning and coffee, meat, a couple eggs or egg yolks now, which I'm deciding whether I'll keep. And I've been adding like mineral salts to my food and to my water. And I do, I'll list sometime the supplements that I take. I still am taking some supplements. I'd like to phase some of them out, but I admit you get so Anyone who's been doing a Lyme disease protocol or autoimmune protocol or thyroid or any of these kind of diets and whatnot or um, just protocols for treating, we get used to taking a myriad of supplements. And I've always felt it's got to be too much. And it's far too much for anyone's bank account, which it's cost me thousands and thousands over the years. And it's something I'd love to give up for financially. I'd like to give it up because I don't think your body needs it that much. You do need more supplementation, I think, when you're ill because your, your gut and everything is not absorbing nutrients the same as an average person, and you just need to be fortified more than, than Joe Schmo, who doesn't have chronic illness. But at the same time, I think we overdo it, and I think that that's just my opinion. And I'm the first one to admit that I am dependent sometimes, or I feel like I am, and I'm not sure which supplement or what is doing what? Should I order it again on Amazon? Oh, I better because maybe I'll feel worse or maybe this will drop or this. So I'm still going to try to wean off some and figure out what is really benefiting me, what's moving the meter, what's helping the most and what's worth taking. And some of these for longevity purposes. But that's really not a priority for me because I'm trying to get better and feel good now if I live a long time, that's a bonus. But I think a lot of people who have chronic illness can relate. It's We just want to feel good in the moment. And I've told people this often, and it may be hard to believe for some, but I always say, if you could tell me that I had a deadline two to five years, or let's say two years, but I'd feel fantastic and I could start working again and, and living life, but I'm done after two years. Would I trade that for being at the state of illness that I've had for the better part of a decade plus and living another 15 years? I would take the two years. And not everyone's going to wrap their head around that, but I think a lot of people who have gone through stuff like this will understand what I'm talking about. So for me, this is about feeling good now. It's not about looking. It's not an aesthetic diet. 
it's a treatment. So some people are gonna comment or say, gosh, it is not natural for people to just eat meat. I'd say you're probably right. Even if we name small populations that this uh, diet is normal for them, whether it be the Inuit or the Maasai or, or uh, you know, certain groups, I don't think it is natural, but nor is taking a pharmaceutical pill or doing all these other things that we do to keep ourselves alive. So I'm treating this as a treatment, as a medicine, as a way to hopefully turn my health around and get me to a point where I'm getting off medications perhaps. Maybe I'll get off thyroid medication, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll continue to feel better, and I, if that's the case, I'll have to decide then whether I start reintegrating foods back in or whether I just say, hey, I'm going to be socially isolated a bit because of this diet, like any restricted diet, but this one especially is socially isolating for sure. But if you get your life back and you feel better, it's a trade-off. So... I'm going to go into other details uh, in other videos, but I want to keep this as short as possible, which is already long. But I want to talk about that. Any restricted diet being socially isolating, what those aspects are, you know, how, how that feels to be not part of the masses who are able to go to restaurants here and there or shop from every grocery aisle. And it's hard to do alone as well. So I recommend anytime you get a chance to do something like this, try to do it with a friend, a partner, or someone who you, you know, a group online, something, because I think the camaraderie will help you. But that will be another topic as well. I don't think it's helpful when it gets to be this cultist fashion, like people who are on certain specific diets uh, veganism, I'll say for example, I love vegans and everyone out there. They don't tend to love others as much sometimes. I shouldn't say that. They, I've experienced some negativity from people who are privileged to eat a vegan diet. And I just try to politely tell them that you haven't experienced what I've experienced and this is working for me or I'm giving it a try, but I respect their practices completely. So I'm not just picking on vegans. It could be any sort of extreme diet that people go on. They tend to get in this groups of cultish nature. And I want to talk about that another time, but um, that's not my, my goal is to stay away from that, but to gain support, to have other people who are doing it, to share tips and knowledge. So I'll be showing some of my cooking and things I've been doing and the way I've managed this. I am a grill novice and a meat cooking kind of novice in general, even though I've been eating it for years. So I'm gonna learn on the fly and I'm gonna do some YouTube video watching. And yeah, so this is my intro to the carnivore diet, day three, wish me luck, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna weigh myself, I'm gonna keep track of things, I'm trying to call my doctor this week, I've been calling, calling, and I wanna get as many labs done pre and then post, so I track things properly. Thank you for watching. It's been beautiful here. It's spring, as you can see. The fragrance from this plum tree is just uh, intoxicating. And fortunately, I'm not allergic. And the weather's just been lovely. I'm finally to the point where I'm not freezing my butt off at night. And I love it. Soon I'm going to be complaining about the heat. But, hey, we'll see. It'll be another, another, another challenge, right? All right, thanks for watching again.